Warning, this video contains gameplay footage from an average Dota 2 player. None of the players in this video are professionals and should not be treated as such. Use caution in attempting any of these item builds or hero selections in ranked play. Hello, hello everybody of the internet. My name is Trips, and today we'll be looking at a gyrocopter game. Or a gyrocopter game. Or corky, I mean gyrocopter game. Anyways, so I just got done recording a Marana video, and unfortunately I did not have enough disk space, so I just spent uh, a bunch of time wasted on a video that... I didn't play too well, so let's look at a gyrocopter, gyrocopter, corky game that maybe uh, maybe I played a little bit better. People on my few people on my team didn't pick fast enough, so let's uh, speed up through this. Pause. Am I on player perspective? I am on player perspective for myself. I think I might have right clicked and keep on moving. All right, so I did end up random randoming. Uh, I keep saying corky, even though I made a joke about it. Now I keep really saying it. I, I random gyrocopter. Uh, so I'm going to be rushing an Aquila. I would not recommend buying a recipe as it does not really offer you too much. Other than taking up an inventory space. But I basically bought all the parts of an Aquila that, um, that I cannot buy from the side shop. So... be Rusty and Aquila, and then Phase Boots, and probably Helm of the Dominator. All of that, all of those items I can buy from this side shop. <sighs> uh, minus the items that I bought to start out with. So, unfortunately I'm going to be left up here alone for some reason. Uh, Skyrath felt it was better to go down bot and help the silencer, but... Which is good for me. I mean, if I can find farm, it's going to give me a ton of experience. And help out uh, myself carry the later stages of the game. I do love Corky. He, uh, <laughs> he, Gyrocopter has, Gyrocopter has pretty good last hit animation. Uh, pretty horrible base damage, in my, in my opinion, um, uh, I'm playing a little bit far back here, I think, because they have Invoker and Ogre Magi, so I was a little bit afraid, um, at least until I can get a little bit of levels on them, uh, to where I don't have to be, I don't have to play so passive. But as long as I get most of the last hits up here, especially in, um, in a lane like this, I think I'll be alright. It's kind of like a weird, it's like a, well, it's a solo safe lane. It's not really an off lane, it's a solo safe lane. So I pick up the Wraith Band, uh, soon to be a Aquila, like I said. It's going to give me a lot of mana. It's going to give, well, a lot of mana regen. It's going to give me decent, uh, decent damage, a little bit of armor as well. And so, let's go pick up that Aquila. It's a pretty fast Aquila, two minute Aquila. That's pretty, pretty good. It's kind of an expensive item for uh, what it does, but I haven't had to waste any of my regen yet. I still have a branch for stats. I'm going to be building that into a wand eventually. And I'm doing a max flat cannon. Okay, couldn't think of the name. Going to be maxing out my flat cannon. Uh, what it's going to do, it's going to give me really good harass because the range is pretty short on Gyro's auto attacks, so I don't want to put myself in too big of a, or too bad of a position, especially if Ogre's just going to stun me, follow it up with a cold snap from Invoker, a few right clicks, and maybe an Ignite, and I'll probably die. Uh, so, what it's going to do, the Flat Cannon's going to give me the ability, how Flat Cannon works is, let's see if I can see the, I can't see the range, but it's, I think it's, does it say the range? Yeah, 1,000 units. So it's something like from where I'm at to probably here, here-ish. Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's a little bit shorter. But it's something probably, I could probably hit Ogre from here. Definitely hit Ogre from where I was standing, and as you saw, the auto attack did hit him. So it's going to give me harass. It's going to let me farm jungle camps that I'm going to stack later on in the game extremely fast. I do end up, I think I end up, uh ending this game with something like 400 last hits. A lot of that is jungle camps, it's not all lane creeps, but all in all it's pretty good. We end up getting the first blood down bot, uh, but I do want to focus on my gameplay 
Uh, the first couple videos that I recorded were a lot of more of like a casting type deal, but as I do want to help myself out, review uh, my gameplay when I watch my games, so I'm going to try to focus on player perspective for a little bit. Hmm. I didn't get any three of those last hits, I don't think. Just pretty poor play on my part. See how I'm doing on last hits as far as third on last hits. Ogre Magi is at 16. I don't know why he's <laughs> Invoker's only at one. He's stealing a lot of last hits from this Invoker, whereas Ogre Magi really doesn't need them in comparison to the Invoker at least. You can end up getting the all of these three. <laughs> so basically the opposite of what just happened. Which flat cannon can help you out a lot. It does push the lane a little bit, which is kind of horrible. Oh, I didn't mention this. Okay. So I see a lot of people buy Ring of Aquila, Bassy Ring, something like that. Unfortunately, you can't turn Vlad's off. I don't know if Vlad's gives it to your minions, but I know Ring of Aquila and Bassy both do. Uh, the aura that it's going to give, it's going to give a bonus, uh, two bonus armor to your minions and any units that you control, basically. And what it's going to do is it's going to give them more, like I said, armor, which means that the enemy creeps are going to do less damage and it's going to push your wave out farther putting you in a more dangerous spot now fortunately for me they did cold snap they did uh fire blast me and i don't i i think he did get off an ignite but because i'm already level six i'm not not really going to take too much damage from them so i'm just going to use a self sell myself back up i did use my did use my ultimate there, call down, and uh, it's not that long of a cooldown though, so not that bit of a trade for myself. As long as I don't die and I can keep up my experience and farm. Now I'm second in farm. We got peep uh, three. Well, besides the ogre, keeps jumping back and forth, but we got a pretty decent amount of our cores up here on top. Now doom is jungling, so some of this. Last hits is skewed as opposed to you know what how much gold intake he's actually getting so we can take a look at net worth. I'm actually on top of the net worth, which is pretty awesome for our team. We have four people on top of the net worth right now. Obviously, silence is kind of a if Marana's is Marana mid, yeah, Marana's gonna be mid and Skyrath seems like he's taking all the last hits down there, or it could have been actually the first blood now that I think of it, but. Uh, just about 40 gold shy of my phase boots, just gonna help damage from the flat cannon, gonna help me position myself pretty good, gonna help chase people as well. And now if you look at my build, you're saying, why don't you take a, uh, why don't you take a point homing missile? Well, in my opinion, it's pretty unreliable, especially if they see it coming, anyone who is not the target, or even while it's setting up, can... Uh, easily right click it down so what I did right there is I saw that my lane was pushing up it's pretty in it's in a pretty bad spot for myself to farm so I was gonna come over to this large camp over here flat cannon and ho um, my missile barrage is a missile or rocket barrage I don't want to get this wrong rocket barrage uh, just gonna help me farm this camp out a bit gonna be able to get two stacks and then the lane should be in a better position for me and gonna come back here and continue to farm up this wave. Now I did not know where Ogre Magi was he did just get a kill elsewhere so I'm playing a little bit cautious I think I could have been playing a little bit more uh, aggressive maybe but still don't want to die it's still pretty early on in the game so you know don't want to die on the carry push out the wave notice that the large camp wasn't up yet because it wasn't eight minutes so I'm gonna continue to farm the wave push up the wave go back to farming the large camp push up the wave go back to farming the large camp I mean as long as I can keep that cycle going it's gonna help my farm out a lot mm -hmm. so here I come large camp Gonna use that flat cannon, gonna be able to do a lot of damage. Gonna use the rocket barrage, 
kill the small ones on the troll camps because then he's going to summon the skeletons who do decent damage but what they're going to do is they're going to give you more gold and more experience for the entire camp if you can uh if you can survive well enough without taking too much damage obviously if uh it's pretty early on in the game you don't want to take too much damage just to get a little bit more gold especially i think it you saw there was only 11 gold so it's not you know nothing to write home about but it helps out in the long run so I'm going to be picking up a morbid mask here going to help my jungling going to help my laning out if uh, I take a little bit of harass from the invoker say and then I go in the jungle jungle up a bit it's going to help me survive the jungle because I don't have anything to tank the jungle minions so just going to continue like I said the cycle push up the lane uh, do the large camp, push up the land, do the large camp. I know the invoker is getting a lot of experience because the tower is killing the minions, but it's also, uh, he's also probably having a little bit of trouble last hitting under tower. So right now I think I'm pretty far ahead of this invoker by net worth standards. I'm about... 500 off from being 2k ahead of him, so about 15, or not 2k, yeah, 2k, about 1500 off, how are we doing on level, I'm about two levels and 1500 ahead of him, so, I think that might have been just because the ogre was in the lane for a while, kind of screwing over the invoker, but, I think I said invoker twice, but ogre magi is what I meant, um, I do pick up the iron, or the, the iron, the morbid mask, and I'm not going to go with the dominator straight away. I'm noticing that my farm is doing really, really well, and I want to pick up a BKB super, super early because they have an invoker, they have a sand king, they have the ogre magi, they have the kunkka, and uh, some of the, the stun coming out from the DK, which means all five heroes would be... Uh, heavily hurt from my BKB. He hits me with the torrent, misses the boat, unfortunately, and I drop a call down because I was thinking I was going to have to fight him head to head, but luckily Marana ulted so I can get out of there. I don't know if I run back to base here. I think I might have just played this a little bit greedy and said I can heal up off my Morbid Mask and get mana from the Aquila. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's what ends up happening. I'm just going to farm the small camp and then go back to my tower and farm. Okay, I ferry myself out an ogre club, which is going to help tank me up. And uh, also the first part of my BKB. And going to give myself a healing self. Don't ever be, I see people sometimes uh, afraid to ferry themselves out a little bit of regen, other than, you know, the starting laning phase because they feel like they're wasting money or you know something to that effect but if you need a self you need a self especially you don't want to just keep running back and forth to base uh, either a wasting money on TP scrolls and B just losing out on experience because right now I'm pretty far ahead and I'm the carry so if I can continue snowballing um, not so much it's not like I'm getting so many kills but I'm number one in uh, I'm number one right now in levels and I'm number one in last hits so I'm doing a big, big service for my team right now, staying on the map, getting gold and experience. I push the wave up, and I don't know where the enemy heroes are right now, so I think I played a little bit cautious there, circling around the jungle. But just going to continue to push, continue to make sure you last hit. That's another big thing. I know I'm not perfect at it. But I'll see a lot of people uh, just, especially when they're alone, they will just push the wave and not really care about getting last hits. They just want to push as fast as possible because they want to uh, get to the tower and do as much damage. But if you're pushing and you're not getting the last hits, you're hurting yourself in the long run because you're just giving up a bunch of gold. And another good thing... If your supports aren't with you, or you don't have anybody to stack with you, or like myself, I skip the helm, so I don't really have anything else to stack camps with. If you go to do a camp and you see it's 52-53, just attack it once, run back away from the camp as far as you possibly can, and it's going to stack, and you're going to get 
basically a double camp there. It's going to help you out, especially if you're the carry. So, like I said earlier, the pattern just going to continue. Large camp, lane creeps. Large camp, lane creeps. So, Kunkka, both Kunkka and Invoker are up here. I'm pretty far ahead of them, but I still don't just want to give up an easy kill for no reason. I want to stay alive. I want to stay able to continuously farm. But I do see the Doom coming up here, and he, I, I think he asked me to gank for him. Well, help him while he ganks my lane. He goes in pretty heavily. I think we played that kind of poorly. He did get the Doom off on the Kunkka. A few right clicks and a rocket barrage. I think... F yep, there we go. Okay. So it was kind of dangerous. I think I played that a little bit poorly. I was focusing on farm rather than helping the Doom out. Luckily the silence came out from the silencer. So nobody was able to follow up other than a little bit of right clicks. Marana ulti coming up. She's going to try to gank. I don't... I don't know if she hit that arrow, I don't remember. I wasn't paying attention, I was just trying to farm. Uh, looks like they did get a kill, which is, I mean, it's good for them. I really didn't need to be there if they were able to get the kill for themselves. I'm just going to go away uh, out of the lane and continue to farm. I don't know if it's the best option. I couldn't honestly, uh, I don't know if I could tell you honestly if it was the best option. But I didn't want to go and fight with them and continuously split EXP. Looks like Silencer's trying to outfarm me here, which is kind of poor play on his part. You really, especially for your position one, uh, they should play extremely greedy if they see you at a camp. Unless you're about to obviously just finish, let's say you're a witch doctor and you're like, alright, I need a hundred gold for my Agnum Scepter, let me get this one camp. They don't have to, but they should let that support, get, just get it as Agnums. But as far as, you know, early on in the game, if a support's farming a camp and it carries like, alright, I have nowhere to farm, I need this camp. No one should outlast hit you, especially in a lane. Now, I tried to pull here, but I think Silencer blocked the key. Oh, no, okay. He must have been just out of range here. But this is the third time I've stacked this camp, so instead of getting three camps, I've gotten six camps out of it. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the small things that count. Getting pretty low here. This is kind of dangerous, especially since they could be. I mean, I could get sun striked if they had a ward right there. But I'm about 300 now. Yeah, 300 off from my BKB. So I've gotten Phase, Morbid, Aquila, and BKB in just under 20 minutes, which is pretty excellent farm. I'm at 100 CS for 16 minutes, which. Uh, it's not it's not the best I've heard 100 at 10 is like like perfect I think I don't know if it's perfect but it's pretty damn close pretty low health unfortunately I wasn't able to finish the wave by the time the sand king came in but I think it was a good decision because he could have stunned epi pretty easily and other than a call down and maybe some rocket barrage I don't really think I would have been able to take care of him because I had no vision so there's the BKB 17 13 I think it was Although I don't have it yet, I did buy it, so. I'll call it. I'll say it. I asked. I asked. So it's cool. You don't have to you don't have to question. This is my mouse right now. Um gonna have that ferried out to me. So I'm looking pretty good. I'm looking pretty strong. I think I should start fighting soon, but we'll see what I actually do. Uh, this game was a little bit a while ago, so. Looks like Murata and Silence are going to go in on the Kunkka, get a Silence, and Arrow off, and that's all she wrote. Uh, I'm going to come in to get a little bit of shared gold and experience, help myself out a little bit. I don't know if I, I did not actually end up getting a assist for that, so I don't, I think I, I did get some of the experience, but I don't think I got any gold. Unfortunately, that arrow was eaten by the uh, by the forged spirit, and just kind of a zoning out missile. I know it wasn't really going to do anything too potent, but it was going to push him back. I get ignited underneath the tower, but I'm not taking too much damage. 
I didn't want to pop the BKB for that small of... I think that Sand King just did whiff his epicenter pretty hard though. You can see a Radiance come, 18 minute Radiance coming out on Doom, not the strongest item. Uh, or not the strongest time rather to get that. Not really the strongest item on Doom anymore really as it is. In a position 1 maybe, if you're continuously farming the lane you're able to get like a Radiance by like 13 minutes maybe. Kunkka got a kill on Skyrim mid. And myself and Silencer are just going to kind of push the advantage, turn off Flat Cannon, push the wave pretty hard. I was able to get a lot of those last hits. I think I did miss one though. It's pretty unfortunate. Unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to see a TP coming in. It's going to be the uh, Ogre Magi. Silencer's going to TP mid because they're pushing pretty hard. And I'm just going to stay up here. This is kind of my zone. This is kind of my area. Just gonna keep the last hits up. Just gonna keep the farm going on. I mean, I'm almost a hundred. Not really, almost. That's kind of an exaggeration. I'm double the ogre mat. I'm double the farm of their highest farming hero right now, and that would be the ogre magi, which shouldn't have the highest farm on their team. Ogre magi is kind of left out alone here. I have the Marana ulti, so I'm gonna homing missile. And I think he did see the debuff or hear it and just kind of book it. I'm not going to chase it. It's not going to really do much. By the time the stun hits him, it's going to be under tower right there, like I said. And I'm just going to get some of this farm. Basically just zoning him out of my area, saying, get back, ho. This is my lane. But I do see the invoker coming in, and I will back off as well. Just got to play the respect game. I know that I cannot take on uh, all five of them, so... <laughs> And this is the part where I'm like, alright guys, there's five top. If you're not going to come up here and protect me, I will uh, leave the lane and just farm the jungle. But fortunately, we do have a TP coming in. They go, and we get a silence on. Going to drop the call down, pop my BKB, Rocket Barrage, and Flat Cannon. Going to be able to take out two of them, but we're going to pay with a Skywrath. Not too bad of a trade, though, especially since I'm the carry. Um, and Skywrath being more of a support. I don't know what his role really is. He's only at 26 last hits, low on the team. So yeah, he's kind of like a 5 roll right now. I don't know if he was actually warding, but it's kind of a position he's playing with his money. I paused there because I think I was typing to him. Sorry, bro. Couldn't save you. Gonna get off a torrent on the Doom, and I think Doom's gonna pay with his life. Yep, unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. Ryan's gonna come in, chase down the Ogre, and we're gonna finish off this tower. Did not see the, uh, who is that, is that the Kanka? Yeah, I, did, I don't think we end up getting this Kanka. Nope, got the tower, just gonna come back over here. Do I end up farming? I should have farmed their ancients right there. I should have done that. I think that would have been uh, a decent amount of gold. Am I, am I still in player perspective for myself? Yeah, I think I might have clicked somewhere and been typing. So, let's take a look at kills deaths. Mirana's actually doing so well right now. I mean, I'm 2-0, and but Mirana's 7-2 and right now. Looks like she's having a very good game. Mirana ult coming out. Got a cold snap on myself, but eh, nothing really. No follow-up after the, after the invis. I think I'm going to whiff a call down right here. Uh, kind of whiffed it a little bit, but I think the Sand King walked right into it. Just going to BKB so they can't really do anything, especially with the Ogre right there. He could have Fire Blasted me. And I'm in a good position to push into the tower, but take some tower aggro, back off. Murano's going to clean up a little bit, and I'm just going to go back to farming. <laughs> Got to keep that GP. What's the gold? Current gold? No, that's not what I want. I want net worth. Net worth almost at uh, 12k. Eh, I keep. I'm over exaggerating. I'm at 11k at 23 minutes, not too bad. Uh, I do have almost 3k gold in the bank, and I'm going to be saving up for a Monkey King bar. Monkey King bar on Gyrocopter is extremely good because his flat cannon uh, does split his auto attack, so it does give all of 
if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. It says it says that uh, only the main targets will receive attack bonuses such as critical strike, but I don't know if that counts for the Monkey King bar. Hmm. That's questionable. But the Monkey King bar is going to give you a lot of damage, a chance to do a mini bash, and a little bit of attack speed. Also, it gives you true hit, so you're not able to miss. Um, such as, they don't have any evasion on their team, uh, as far as natural evasion through abilities. But they could have, you know, uphill advantage when pushing into base. And that uh, gives you true hit for that as well. So, just going to pick up the Demon Edge here, first part of the Monkey King bar, and it offers an extreme boost in damage for myself. Not trying to be rude to the Marana, but going to steal her farm that she might have been waiting around for. But this is alright. Looks like Doom's surpassing me a little bit in the farm. I think we're playing uh, kind of the back and forth game. Does he have... yeah, he, ha he has a Midas and Devour, so that's why. And this is the point in the game where I think I'm going to be more a lot more active now that I've gotten a lot of ability to farm. Drop a call down, focus down this invoker a little bit. He's going to try to get a ghost walk, but that rocket barrage has extreme range. Going to be able to get a double, hopefully a triple. Got the doom off on the uh, Kunkka here, not going to be able to do anything. Doom's going to be able to finish him off. And... Almost at 3k gold here. Farm with this creep wave a little bit, and that already, my friends, is going to be my Monkey King bar. Now, what I was waiting around there for, you're saying, hey, why didn't you uh, kill that tower faster? What, the, what if they would have afforded that? Well, if you get the last, at the very last hit, if you get the last hit on the tower, what it's going to do is going to give you yourself a little bit of bonus gold and. Uh, I believe it does shave off a little bit of gold from the gold that is split between your team. So it's a little bit greedy on your part to take the last hit as far as uh, just letting the tower or letting your creeps kill the tower. Whereas if the creeps kill the tower by themselves, the gold is split pretty much evenly across the board to your team. But as the position one, that's, that's something that you want. You want to be the gold leader. I did take the big creep there, the Hell Baron, just going to kind of back off. I ended up seeing a little bit too many enemies down there and didn't want to just give up my advantage of what I'm going on right now. I got, I'm 4 or 5 and 0. Oh. Going to clean up this ancient camp and I don't believe I send out my Monkey King bar right away. I think I ended up waiting for a Talisman of Evasion. But I do wait for the minute mark. I'm going to come over here, clean up the ancient camp one more time. So we got pretty good ward coverage just looking at the mini map. Uh, we're farming up their jungle, kind of choking them out of their own jungle. about 200 away from the Talisman of Evasion. Everybody's kind of waiting around mid trying to get a good gank off. I'm just gonna still do my own thing. I've helped out my team a lot, but I still need to keep my gold advantage up pretty high. So right now, if you look at the net worth that I got going on, Ogre, the highest net worth on their team at about 7k, is nowhere near Doom and I's farm right now. I 
There's the Monkey King bar and the Talisman Evasion, as I said. Now, something I did not do is the Helm of the Dominator stacking. Um, I don't know if I necessarily needed to with my farm at the moment, but it obviously would have it would have helped out if I would have been stacking ancient camps. I would I could have been at you know like four or five ancient stacks instead of clearing those two small stacks that I ended up doing. But I think I've done pretty decently for myself. I do end up seeing a couple of them come in. Going to drop the call down just to kind of warrant them from running at me. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to give up a BKB because I did get X, uh, X marks the spotted. And they did not get the deny on the tower, so not too bad for me. Give up a BKB charge and a call down cooldown, which really isn't that long of a cooldown at all, um, for a tower. So, good trade. But here, like I said, this could have been double, triple stacked if I would have been using my Helm of the Dominator by the time I came back to it. So I'm going to be building the Eagle Song, which, eh, or the Butterfly, which is kind of meh, honestly, in this game, because the Kunkka's damage, besides obviously him right-clicking myself, the damage is going to be coming just from the Tidebringer AoE Cleave. But, going to get a call down going on, going to kill the DK pretty, pretty easily, which is really questionable, because DK should be pretty tanky by now. Just got a missile on this ogre just to basically guarantee that he's not going to be able to get away. And Silencer's going to get the kill. Which I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to complain. Because I'm pretty far ahead in gold. And anytime I can help out a little bit. Because, I mean, Silencer's at 6k right now, net worth. So if he can get those kills boosting himself up a little bit, go for it, man. Kill steals aren't really my thing to yell out so and here we go gonna be taking on Roshan I don't think they can really contest us it looks like they're coming for us but I don't really see what they can do against us especially since we have all five in the area Marana Alti gonna be coming out gonna get the silence off and SK is kind of in a bad position he was it looked like he was really hoping to come in, stun, epi, kill us both, but when that silence went off, he kind of got caught with his pants down. And just going to finish off the roast. No, roche. no need in chasing kills. I don't know why I'm looking at my Aquila like that. But. Oh, I think I was about to drop it for the Aegis. <laughs> I do ended up uh, putting it, trolling the Control in the sky a little bit, uh, putting my Aquila into his, into his inventory. I don't know if his inventory was full or not. I don't think it was one slot away, but uh, if you buy TP scrolls or something cheap, you can put them in your or you can put them in your teammates' inventory if you want to guarantee that you're going to get the Aegis rather than someone who doesn't need it. Gonna get a missile off. Like I said, not really that. Uh, it's not really that good of a stun. It's just kind of a zoning tool. A lot of people, when they see the missile, they just run away. So, Pretty tanky right now, especially I'm not afraid with the Aegis. Just going to take this tower. And we're in a pretty good spot right now. SK did not get a double stun off. He just takes out the sky. Going to drop the call down just to get away. And... gonna go back to my jungle and finish off my uh, butterfly <coughs> excuse me I think I did end up coming to this camp a little late I don't think I could have stacked that generally the window is like 53 54 to the next minute is when you want to pull it some camps are iffy. Uh, the medium dire camp, right below the one directly below the tier two tower, that one's extremely iffy, and I end up getting gone on right now. 
I do remember this. Not much I can do other than popping the BKB. Could have popped that a lot faster. Dropping the call down. Popping the flat cannon. And then they all start running scared. They have, they're have they 5v1 right now. And almost took out three of them. But unfortunately, I don't think I end up getting... I don't know. Is this missile going to take out the Dragonite? He could have easily... That looks like a one-hit missile. I'm really wondering when I die here. Because I do have the Aegis. Yeah, I just saw, if you just did see the creep that died right there, he did have a bash symbol for him. So I do think, I'm almost certain that uh, Monkey King Bard does stack with Flat Cannon. I just don't think that you can crit with Flat Cannon. Other than the main priority uh, attack unit, and I'm just kind of a I'm just kind of a beast right now. Like there's not much that they can do to me. They're gonna get an epi off, but I do have the Aegis, and I'm gonna BKB when I get back up. I don't know why I didn't instantly BKB there. Misplay. Yeah, definitely a misplay on my part. So. I should have been spamming the BKB so that right when I would have uh, came up, the DK wouldn't have been able to uh, get a stun off on me, and they would have been able to get the follow-up damage. I think yep, he's going to die from the ignite damage. So not too bad. First kill, of the game, or first death of the game at 35 minutes. Definitely a misplay on my part. Not too big of a throw, I don't think. I don't know who ended up getting... Sand King did un get my unstoppable for a 638, though. So, it's not too... That's not something you want to give up. 638 gold is definitely not something. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking at the divine rape here. <laughs> uh, never want to throw the game with the divine rape here, but I feel like I was pretty far ahead. I really don't know where this ogre magi is getting his farm from. He's at Aghanim's Bloodstone Mystic Staff right now, like, dude. He's playing really, really greedy for his team. I think his team's paying for it, too. So, got the butterfly, and for those of you that do not know, butterfly did get changed uh, recently in the recent patch, where if you activate it, you're going to get a bonus movement speed, almost like phase boots. Uh, but you are going to give up the evasion for the time of the speed boost. Silence off. Going to follow it up with an arrow. Call down. Easy kills. Easy game. Easy life. So at this point, we have two, or they have two open racks, and we only are missing two towers, so we're pretty far ahead. And hopefully we're able to just end the game pretty soon here. I think this is one of those times again where we're really, really, really far ahead. And if we can work to press our advantage, we can end the game pretty soon. As long as we don't throw too hard. Epicenter ended up coming out. Skywrath killed himself with his ultimate. 
and Sand King's gonna eat my call down and my BKB was kind of wasted there. I think I ended up going a little bit to him and that's my second death of the game. So that's that's one disadvantage is that uh, myself I was so far ahead to the point where if they lost me they're gonna be losing a huge 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 chunk of damage to where if I fuck up in the team fight I'm screwing my team over even more because they don't have that much follow-up damage So, how I could have played that differently was when I saw the epi come out, I was barely, like, if this is the edge of the epi, I was, like, right on the edge of it, and I could have just backed up a little bit instead of, B I think I panicked BKB'd, and then once I panicked BKB'd, I came back in and was able to kill the ogre, I think it was, and then there was three heroes up here, uh, as long as... Uh, as well as the Sand King that ate my call down. So, by the time I actually went back in, the BKB was wearing down to the point of like two or three seconds left on the magic immunity. And then I tried to tank them to the face, but all three or all f three to four of them were focusing me. And that was a little bit of a throw on my part. So, I'm gonna sell my phase now for Boots of Travel. I don't have buyback gold though, so. But with the butterfly, I basically have the ability that I would have with phase, so kind of activating both of them at the same time is a little bit overkill. I think I'm coming over here to check if Roche is up. Unfortunately it wasn't, but I did not realize that it was going to be up now. So, <laughs> if I would have checked that two sec or like five seconds later, we could have uh, we could have had a major play uh, advantage in this team fight. But Doom runs right past a creep wave with Marana ult. Uh, the, the fade time still up, so they did see him. But he's just going to run up to the Sand King, Doom the Sand King, and level death. Along with a silence, which he did not have agonims, so. <coughs> but, I don't think, yeah, they didn't deny him. Nope, they did not deny the Sand King. It's a 4v5 right now, I don't think we should be pushing mid though, because the tower's still there. I think we're just going to run up in here. Yep, run up in here. Invoker's getting way, 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 way too out of position here. Call down. Gonna be able to take him out pretty easily. BKB up, running in. Does not get hit by the boat. Gonna be able to take down the DK, I hope. A little bit of a rocket barrage on the Kunkka and pushing them out a little bit. I do get axed, but. They're just kind of pulling me back in to kill them with flat cannon. This ogre though is so tough. Gonna to be a team white for their team, and by the time that happened, our crew boy was able to push up. Gonna wait for Doom to run ahead, so I'm gonna take this little pylon type deal. Doom's gonna tank the tower, and I'm gonna do the damage, but unfortunately he runs away, so I'm gonna to have to book it out. I'm not gonna be able to take the damage. Just gonna push up the creep wave so that I can actually do damage to this tower because Doom didn't want to tank it. But I did see the ogre coming in and I'm like, alright, well, I gotta go heal. Didn't want to give up my life for that. This is one. This is one poor invoker. Pretty unfortunate for him. Seeing how much damage we did to that tower. 
And just gonna try to get my Reaver here for my Satanic. Hmm. We're in a good we're in a pretty advantageous position right now. With uh bot racks down and pretty much I mean some of the pylon type deals, the wells or whatever you want to call them. Um basically what they're gonna do is they're going to attract the creep wave to them. So instead of the creep wave running straight for the uh, tier fours right next to the ancient I couldn't think of the word for some reason right next to the ancient they're not going to damage the tier fours they're going to either a attack the creep wave that keeps continuously spawning or they're going to attack the little pylon type deals which are going to deter their main goal which is killing the ancient because obviously one creep wave is not going to kill the tier fours, but one creep wave, two creep wave, three creep wave. If they continuously run headfirst into the towers, it's gonna slowly but surely uh, damage enough to take it down. So we finally realized that Roche is up. Gonna take Roche. Press, you know, just continue to get our gold advantage here. And I remember hugging this so that Doom was not able to grab the Aegis. I think I should have taken that Invisirin. And pushing top was our, probably our best option because mid still had tower. We could just force in top, get the racks, double racks is basically a check. Especially on opposing lanes. I think uh, while we made it up here pretty fast, we're waiting for the rest of our team to come in. More so Doom. Skyrath still has my Ring of Aquila at this point, which I don't think he understands offers nothing to him. I do remember him now, though, saying that he was uh, coming back to the game from a pretty long break, so... No harm, no foul. To carry my items for me, man. I don't know why I'm sitting far back. I don't know if we couldn't see them. Oh, I think we were waiting for them around Alti. Just gonna run up. They have no vision up here, so they don't actually know we're here. We don't see too many of them. Gonna get a silence off gonna focus down the DK because he has the most potential to do damage while Ogre is pretty uh, pretty well off as far as items <coughs> if he does not get a good multicast I don't think he does that much damage gonna be a pretty bad epicenter they take out one um, but I do have the Aegis gonna come back up with the BKB pop the BKB instantly go off the invoker he's gonna Yules himself gonna finish off the DK Finish off the invoker, kill the SK, and I think I man fight Ogre here. Lucky for me, I do end up finishing with the ultra kill, but I get finished off by the SK. Just gonna buy back and bots in. I think I could have just pushed by now, but I think I do back off. Do I back off? No. Um, I didn't know if I could take both racks, so the best option here is just to damage the ranged racks because it's permanent damage. DK, I don't know why you went Massive Madness. But he's going to let me do a lot of damage to him. Pop the BKB, drop a call down on top of the SK. SK is going to be forced out to move, and I'm just going to basically ignore him and finish off the Rax because kill's not really going to do anything for me whereas the Rax is basically going to secure the game. I'm going to tank this tower a bit so Silencer and I can damage it and yeah I think our best bet there was to back off because the enemy team, the entire enemy team was up. 
<clears throat> so I put a homing missile on the ogre. Other than that, I think I would have died if I went in because I didn't have my BKB. But, I mean, we're in a pretty good position. We don't really need to fight them. Because I think their only option at this point would be to rush down mid, but we still have our tier 2 mid, and we have both of their racks body and top. So, gonna go ahead and buy the Reaver. I did not want to buy. I think right now, I don't know if I'd end up making the right decision, but right now I don't want to buy the entire Satanic because. Actually, you know what? My buyback is on cooldown. I just bought back. Yeah, okay. So I do end up buying the Satanic because I know that. Otherwise, I would not have bought the Satanic. I would have kept the money for buyback, which would have been the smarter decision, especially if I had uh, boots of travel. Because the only thing that buyback is going to do is going to limit you from getting gold. So it's not really that much of a disadvantage. Why did I have no clue why the Doom bought a Bloodstone? That's especially at 50 minutes. That's kind of a really dumb item to buy. I think he might have went for the regen, but <laughs> <clears throat> so now that I have a Satanic Butterfly Monkey King bar, I only have a five-second BKB, but it's not horrible. Same thing really can't do too much to me. And we're just kind of in those one of those awkward positions where people have died, they're respawning, everyone's trying to... I don't know why we're farming. This is pretty dumb. We should have just grouped, smoked, went down mid, pushed the game, end the game. There's no reason for us to be farming right now. <clears throat> Especially myself with buyback on cooldown. I'm just wasting time. This is uh, pretty dumb in my opinion. I mean, I know it's hard in pub games to get everybody coordinated to be like, all right, don't farm, let's just push, but still, as a whole, we should have agreed just to push. Seems like we're wasting a lot of time here. Silencer's up at our large camp farming. Uh, we have two people farming, including myself, farming their jungle. We're going to check Roche, but... I don't know. I don't know why we're doing this. This is a big waste of time. Treads. I think he might have started off with mana boots, probably. <clears throat> Push in the lane a little bit, and then come back. But still, game could have probably been over by now. I think at this point we do realize it though and waiting the doom is a little bit out of position, but not too much we can do. We got mostly everybody gathered mid. Everybody's pretty ready up to end the game. <clears throat> For all I know we could have been waiting on uh maybe we we're waiting on uh some ultis to come off cooldown. Gonna get a silence off. Looks like he misses the tornado, gets the refresher off on the Silencer, but unfortunately we run ulted right underneath a sentry. Get a second silence off, but we're not even using it. We're not even fighting. It's just the ogre kind of running back and forth at us, and we're just going to focus down the racks. And once we get these racks, we're going to have megas, and that is game. Um, they're going to try to 
Fortify, but it's not really going to do too much. Going to push the Ogre out with a few right clicks. Going to get a Deafening Blast on myself. That's going to disarm me, but I mean, I'm still able to use Call Down and not be able to finish off the Ogre. Did I get Hel I think I got Halberded. But Kunkka is not going to do too much damage to me. He doesn't really have that much farm. I'm going to see an Epi coming out on the SK, but I do end up using Satanic, and I'm able to barely stay alive here. I think it ends up wearing off, and I die, though. But because we have the Megas, there's not too much that they can do. Unfortunately, Murano missed the arrow, but our creeps are just going to clean up the rest of their base, even if they do buy back. <sighs> and I think they finished the game without me because I ended up dying without buyback. I do have buyback, actually, right now. Oh, I do use it. Coming in. Just to be in the final freeze frame. Just playing games with the Sand King right now. Dropping the fall down. He blinks out, and the game is over. So, um, like I said, this game probably maybe was 10 minutes too long. I think we could have definitely easily won this a lot faster. But, I mean, I still think it was a pretty good game on my part. I got really far ahead in farm really fast. Um, I made a good choice getting the BKB early. A few bad uh, plays on my part. But, uh, all in all, pretty good game. Ended up getting 408 last hits, whereas their team, nobody was even close to... Um, me as far as farm goes let me see if I can pause this before it closes <clears throat> but that's a that's a pretty good gyrocopter game so I hope you guys enjoyed if you learned anything from this video or you know somebody that maybe they're not too hot at gyrocopter and they want some uh, tips even if you can learn one thing from this video that's all I'm trying to go for to help anybody out that's looking for some help but uh, like, comment, favorite this video, share it around. It all helps me out, guys, and I will see you again on another video.